welcome back again. So, we have a now complete idea about the 2 by 2 linear systems, its stability analysis and is about the phase portraits and all that. Now, when we go to an n dimensional system the things are not easy, uh, because there will be n eigenvalues and according to n eigenvalues there will be certain eigenvalues which are simple and there will be eigenvalues with uh, algebraic uh, different algebraic and geometric multiplicity, there will be complex eigenvalues which are distinct, there will be complex eigenvalues with the multiple uh, multiplicity higher multiplicity. Accordingly, the decomposition of matrix is uh, much more complicated, but this is again one can read it uh, linearly make it equivalent to an another matrix, but the there will be various uh, types of blocks what are called the block way of diagonalizing it. What we have seen in 2 by 2 systems, we have 3 types of block one is in the diagonal form lambda 0 0 mu, the second one is the diagonal form is lambda 1 0 lambda and third one is of the form a minus b b a. Now, we are going to have different types of blocks according to the multiplicity and things like that. We will appeal to the Jordan decomposition theorem and later you will see that there are typically 2 types of blocks but that two types of blocks can occur in different ways with a different order and that is a difference. And then each of that blocks uh, computing your exponential is easy and that is what we are going to present here. For example, when n equal to 3, you have 3 eigenvalues, 3 eigenvalues. In this case, the only possibility is that all the 3 can be real or one can be real and other two will be complex conjugates. These are the only possibilities will come. So, a typical block matrices will be equivalent to something like that. You can have the form, it may reach the form lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3. So, you may get block of this form. Typically, this is the case, you have eigenvalues, 3 eigenvalues with the 3 eigenvectors you will have that. So, so, the, so, you have the main issue is that the lack of eigen vectors. It can be of this form, that is another form, it can be lambda here, lambda 1 here and then another one lambda 2, this is a block of this you already studied. You can have a block of this form and here you have 0, 0, 0, this is a case you have a block of that form. You will also have a block of that form, another one lambda, 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 0, 0 here with all diagonal elements 1. This is another block of this one. Typically, these are the blocks you are going to get high dimension, it will be complicated, you will have different multiple of blocks. And other type of block, these are the cases where you have real eigenvalues. Another one, one real and one complex you will have an eigenvalue of this form and you have a block of this form a minus b b a you will have 0 here 0 here 0 here you see. And all these things you will see that uh, you can see that uh, you can compute e power b. So, I will give an exercise here to start with. You consider this type of systems, you take B 1, uh, B 1. So, you consider this system with B 1, the exercise is work out uh, all possible cases, work out all possible cases with the above matrix, uh, possible cases with the above that systems. So, you can write down your system wide system with respect to b 1, b 2, b 3, b 4 areas thing and see the trajectories how it will look like okay. and sketch the portrait and sketch the face portrait if possible. So, we will start with an example here 
example an easy case a is of the form with a diagonal form 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 minus. this is a decoupled system already in the decoupled system so two eigen values two eigen values lambda 1 equal to 1 and lambda 2 is equal to minus 1 so here you have the, your multiplicity algebraic multiplicity multiplicity 2 luckily it is in that format you do not know. so it is a decoupled system you can write down your solution immediately x 1 t is equal to x 0 1 e power t x 2 t is equal to x 0 2 e power t and x 3 t is equal to a x 0 3 e power minus t you see this goes to plus or minus infinity as t tends to infinity this goes to plus or minus infinity but this goes to the origin zero. so how does it look like so if you look at your x1 x2 plane you will have unstable node type thing so forget about the x3 component look at only x1 x2 plane it is something like a node because x 0 1 e power t x 0 t is nothing but straight lines in the x plane. So, that graph if you are do not have if you are looking only your initial values are in the x 1 x 2 plane if you are starting an initial the and third component 0 then by this thing third x 0 3 0 x 3 t will be 0 for all t and hence the so if you are starting a solution in x 1 x 2 plane it will remain there and in that case it is a not type singularity so explain the not type singularity and these are straight line because you have the same eigen value 1 on the other hand so you will get your uh, and which is also unstable in this particular case so you will get eu is equal to x1 x2 plane that is your unstable thing and if you look at it uh, x1 x3 plane you have one eigen value one ex again uh, it is all uh, all these are all uh, decoupled system. So, x 1 plane you have the eigen value 1 and x 3 corresponding to that you have a eigen value 1. So, you have your saddle type actually saddle type and you will uh, this is the same thing when you look at it x 2 x 3 plane. So, if you look at these trajectories restricted to these planes the trajectories will remain there itself and you will have again the saddle type and you are stable part and which is stable because you have minus 1 as the eigen value uh, which is a, uh, not stable sorry it is a saddle type and you do not have it. But if you look at only the x 3 axis if you take something a point initial point in the x 3 axis that uh, you will get a, a stable space. So, you will have x 3 is the stable subspace this is the unstable subspace and this is x 3 stable x uh, x 3 axis is your stable subspace which is one that now let us try to plot these things in a uh, let us try to plot. So, let me plot this this is my if you do that one. So, this is your x 2 this is your x 1 and this is your x 3. So, if I uh, so you can extend of course, you can extend like this. So, if you extend your x 3 like this. So, le let us look at only x 2 x 3. So, if you look at x 2 x 3 you have the saddle point. So, the trajectory it will be there and x 2 goes to infinity. So, you will have this thing and this is your x 2 x 3 correspondingly this is your x 2 x 3. So, you will have the trajectory will going in this trajectory will go here you see. So, that is the corresponding to x 2 x 3 plane so, this is your x 2. So, you see similarly if you look at it x 1 x 3 plane again it is a saddle point type. 
So, you will have this one which is going to x 1 going to infinity. So, you will have your x 1 x 3 if you go here. So, you will have uh, your trajectory something like this. Okay. So, again x 1 going to infinity. So, the trajectory will move that. So, that is in the x 1 x 3 plane. Now, let us look at the x x 1 x 2 plane. In x 1 x 2 plane, the solution if you plot is a straight line and which is uh, going to infinity. So, if you start from anywhere, so and it is a straight line. You see, you have your straight line. If you look plot it here, you will have plot. So, let me with a thing. So, this is the x 1 the axis will be of course, if you start an arbitrary point accordingly it will behave. So, whenever you start a point it will give you a trajectory and if you project that to the plane you will see that saddle point way of behaving it. Okay. So, let me put it a different color also uh, for this thing. So, let me put a different color. So, you have that you see. So, that is a complete picture about uh, that plane this is the phase portrait will look like what the graphs and the curves are given on the respective projected planes x 1 x 2 x 2 x 3 and x 1 x 3. Okay. So, you will have all that uh, kind of picture. So, if you start arbitrarily it will move accordingly. So, now with this one and uh, maybe one more example to give you so that uh, you slowly get used to it how things will be three dimension you can do this little more with a little more imagination. I am going to take a matrix which has uh, some complex second value. So, the best way you know that the complex second value you have minus 2 my this is a b minus b b minus b minus 2. So, I will take 0 0 0 0 anything 3. So, if you do this one, so you see the corresponding to have you have a system you see this corresponds to this corresponds to a 2 by 2 system this corresponds to a single system and this gives you the first part gives you a complex second value. So, you can do the exercise again each time you can do the exercise eigen values Again, values are minus 2 plus i, of course, minus 2 minus i and 3. You have this Egan values. So, what do you do is that you already seen this one, this is already in a decoupled form. So, 2 by 2 system, the x1, x2 plane. Uh, here it is like a focus, like a focus. You have to see that I do not classify because uh, the like focus if you take only x 1 x 2 plane and other the things you have to see that one. So, if you look at here if you are trying to do the phase portrait of this one. So, you have your phase portrait of x 1 x 2 plane. So, I have my x 1 x 2 plane like this. So, if I take any trajectory. So, you have here this is my x 1 x 2 plane this is x 1 this is x 2 and this is the x 3. So, if I start any point here again it is a decoupled the x 1 x 2 plane and x 3 part is decoupled because of this particular form of a. So, if I start here anything uh, any point here if I start it will remain again. So, if I start anything in x 1 x 2 plane that means the x 3 coordinate is 0 and by looking at the way we constructed your matrix and solution it is a decoupled the x 3 is part component is decoupled and hence it will remain in that plane itself uh, and it will behave like a focus. And since uh, you have minus 2 as the real part of uh, the Eigen value is minus 2 in the other case which is a converging thing it converges. So, if you start from here it will remain in the plane and it will come something like that it will and you have an orientation according to the sign of p. You see you have that writing. So, the trajectory this is the x 1 x 2 trajectory plane, but on the other hand 
Now, suppose I start a point from anywhere arbitrarily, what will happen? The x 3 component the eigenvalue is 3. So, the x 3 t will be x 0 3 into e power t. So, the x 3 component as t tends to infinity, the x 3 component will tends to infinity, but then x 1 and x 2 is something like a focus. So, it will move around that one and the move around the uh, its axis, but then moves away along the x 3 direction. So, if you do this thing, uh, so if you start from anywhere other than in the plane, so it will move like this, it will uh, go around uh, that thing, but at the same time x 1 and x 2 it will move and it will uh, become smaller and smaller around the x 3 axis because x 1 and x 2 go to 0, it is a x 1 and x 2 the real part will go to 0. So, it will move around the x 3 axis and move and uh, reach go up, but uh, the uh, amplitude becomes smaller and smaller. And on the other hand instead of minus 2 if you replace 2 and it will be diverging. So, again then it will be move around like that it becomes larger and larger. So, that is how you can focus uh, you can sketch the graph according to the model. So, we have two examples are given one you have the focus behavior on a restricted plane on another example in which you have a saddle point behavior. You can give all kinds of things with the node and all that. So, we will uh, skip this uh, we will do only that one. Now, we will go to the general case and Jordan form general case typically you want Jordan form. I am not going to explain the Jordan form in detail that you have already studied in the either preliminaries or you also studied uh, in the uh, general linear algebra course. So, Jordan form typically says that you look for all the eigenvalues. According to eigenvalues you have to classify the real eigenvalues you have complex eigenvalues. And then if you the idea is that if you have an n by n system you essentially need n eigenvectors, but if there is an eigenvalue if all the n eigenvalues are all distinct whether real or complex if you can produce n you have the diagonalization, but then there will be eigenvalues real eigenvalue with algebraic multiplicity but less geometric multiplicity and then you may not have enough eigenvectors to diagonalize. Then the idea is to look for what are called generalized eigenvectors studied in your preliminaries. And according to the deficiency between a geometric multiplicity and algebraic multiplicity, you will be having a lack of sufficient number of eigenvectors. And this makes uh, just like in the previous case 2 by 2 system, when you have an eigenvalue repeated twice, you got a block of the form lambda 1 0 lambda and which is not diagonalizable. So, now as I said in n equal to 3, you have all kinds of things, but what Jordan decomposition tells you that every matrix A, if you start with so A, the A you can uh, linearly you can make it equivalent to a diagonal form, not with a diagonal matrix, diagonal with entries with blocks B1, etcetera, some number Br, you can have the blocks. Each one, each Bi will have some order, these are all belongs to certain multiplicity and other thing. So, you will be able to write this matrix B1 you will have some order matrix say uh, k 1 and b 2 will have some order 2 and etcetera b r will some order k j. Of course, k 1 plus k 2 plus etcetera k r will be equal to n. So, the total order will be n by n matrix. How does my b looks like? That is more important. The idea of that if you want to solve your system, so if you have this is called my b big B. So, if you want to solve your system A x equal to y, because of this diagonal form it reduces to it is enough to write down your solution enough to solve 
the system of the form each one. So, if you want to do it, you can have a transformation p and p inverse. Here also it exists, but essentially reduces to study each b i a, a subsystem which may be of smaller order and this also b i has a some special forms which I am going to describe here. So, it is enough to study b i of some y i the uh, is equal to something. Uh, so, y i dot is equal to b i of y you can have solving for i equal to 1 to r. And each y i is a vector corresponding to k by uh, k vector, k j vector, k i vector. If b i is of order k i by k i, k by k i cross k i matrix, then y i is a vector of uh, uh, order k i, is a k i vector. So, you, you can solve for all these things. So, a bigger system eventually reduced to solving a small system. How does b i takes the following two forms? b i takes the following forms, takes the following only two forms that is a whole interesting thing following form. So, it will be of the form some lambda the diagonal entries are lambda and the off diagonal entries will be 1 the remaining will be 0. This is the case corresponding to real eigenvalue corresponding to real lambda and it will take the form or it will take the form the following form that is another form it will take the form d d is a d and here i 2 of this itself this block itself is a block each one is a 2 by 2 block everything is 0. And what is d? d is of the form a minus b see this is a familiar form eventually reduced to everything and i 2 is a 2 by 2 uh, is an identity 2 by 2 identity 0 0 1 you see. So, each block the only thing is that in the A, B there are different blocks B 1 etcetera B R, each B i will have different orders and according to the eigen values uh, whether it is a real it takes this form or the form D is equal to I 2. So, this is again the form is a block consisting of 2 by 2 blocks. For this is corresponding to this is corresponding to corresponding to uh, complex eigenvalue complex corresponding to complex eigenvalues. So, it is enough essentially it is enough to how to know to compute in theoretically it is still difficult it's theoretically it is enough to know how to compute uh, the exponential of these two type of matrices which is what I am going to do it right now. Okay. So, you want to so I call this is equal to the form C 1 for the computation with the right this I call it of the form C 2. So, I want to know how to compute C 1 how to compute e power C 1. So, now consider this case we are going to do that one. So, C 1. So, look at C 1. C 1 I can write it separately as lambda I separate this one lambda into identity is some order whatever it is plus n. I write that one. So, look at here I separate this one I keep only the diagonal entries put 0 0 everywhere plus I put diagonal entries also 0 and put 1 1 1 as the uh, off diagonal. Okay. So, where some order I have not told what is the order depending on that where n takes the form diagonal entries also 0 1 
1 etc 1 the rest are of all the elements is you see it has a very nice matrix here is a small exercise again for you you have to keep on doing that exercise assume c1 is of order k i told you it will be some order i assume c1 is of order k of order k so i is a identity matrix of order k by k and n is a k by k matrix okay exercise is that show that n power k is the zero matrix zero matrix and n power k minus 1 is not a zero matrix just compute n n square etcetera if you want to compute uh, either by induction or you can compute that one such type of matrices are called nilpotent matrix so you have a a matrix any matrix so let me matrix a uh, any matrix 2 is said to be nilpotent said to be nilpotent of order k if k is the first instance where q power k is a zero matrix and q power k minus 1 is not a zero matrix that is the first instance. Of course, if q power k is 0 that implies q power k plus 1 etcetera q power x plus k plus 2 etcetera 0. So, that makes the computation of mat matrices is easy because you do not have to compute after k onwards. So, the exponential term exponential of nilpotent matrices reduces to a finite sum immediately. Therefore, e power q so the computation of a nilpotent matrix is easy e power q will be identity plus q plus q square by 2 factorial plus of course, if k is large you have to do a large thing still lot of work, but it is finite. So, you do not have to worry about anything else you see. So, that e power q after that is everything is 0 because q power k is equal to 0 implies q power k plus 1 equal to 0 q power k plus 2 equal to 0 it goes on to so you have the nilpotent level. Our aim is to compute e power c 1 e power we want to compute we want to compute want to compute want to compute e power c 1. Of course, e power c 1 as I again remarked earlier if you have 2 matrices now c 1 is of the form 2 matrices lambda i plus n. So, if you want to compute e power a plus b is equal to e power a into e power b then e power a plus b is equal to e power a into e power a b if a and b commute. The interesting fact is that in this case one of the matrices identity hence identity and n will always commute any matrix with an identity matrix will commute hence uh, uh, further. So, further lambda i and n this is a trivial fact and commute that is a important thing if there is no commutation you can write. So, e power c 1 will be e power lambda i plus n since this commute this will be nothing but e power lambda i plus into e power n. So, you have immediately e power n and e power n you have already the formula you have already the formula for e power n. Okay. So, you have your e power n. So, in particular so in further so you are interested in computing e power t c 1 because you want to find the solutions corresponding to c 1. Okay. So, that is e power t c 1 will be e power 
lambda t lambda in per e power t n. So, if you do a simple computation it is immediately yeah, I will go to the next page. So, e power c 1 will be equal to e power lambda i into e power t c 1 we want to introduce. So, you will get this as if you do this one you get e power t lambda into e power t n and that immediately can be written as e power t lambda. So, you have a complete thing if you do t will change the thing you get 1 t t square by 2 factorial etcetera up to t power k minus 1 by k minus 1 factorial then 0 1 t the last element will be t power k minus 2 by k minus 2 factorial. So, if you go like that the last but 1 the last here 1 and the last element uh, row will be 0 etcetera 0. So, you see. So, you have an immediate solution. So, for the system with C 1 if you go back to the system with go, uh, not this one next one. So, C 1 yeah if you go to the system with the C 1 here you see. So, you want to solve the system. So, you have that this is a system a particular form of the matrix these are the only two things will be coming up. So, if you go here, so if you assist, if you want to solve your system y dot is equal to c 1 y, this will immediately implies your y t is equal to e power t lambda into e power t n this matrix e power t n of y naught. See, so you have your solution, you have a nice solution here. Now, we go to the next case, second case. Another one is of the form C 2. C 2 is again you can write it as in a nice way, but not with an identity. You will write only d on the diagonal. You write your d here, 0 here, 0 here plus on the off diagonal these are all 2 by 2 zeros, 0 etcetera 0 is 2 by 2 0, 0, 0, i 2. So, you go here 0, uh, the last but 1, the last element will be i 2 and then you have 2 by 2 things, 2 by 2 you will have 0. So, you see, so this is what again you can write this is a uh, uh, 2 matrices and this can be written as something like uh, you call this diagonal, diagonal of d d d plus some n, where n in this form is. So, so let me write it uh, r. So, you can write this here again these things are commuting, you have the commutation there is no problem. So, if you write your solution with a little computation I will skip here with a little computation which is an exercise little computation the similar thing computation you can write your e power t c 2 is equal to see so that that matrix is of the form what is the matrix e power a t okay, into everything will come 2 by 2 blocks r T r etcetera t power k minus 1 by k minus 1 factorial r 0 r t r etcetera up to that and the last element will be r last element will be 0 last but 1 will be uh, last 
yeah is correct r so you have yes and what is r r will be of the form the same formula your cos bt minus sin bt you see only thing you are not able to separate it cos bt so you see again you have your solution yt if you have the solution y equal to c2y of this form your solution will be of the form y2 is equal to e power a t into this matrix whatever it is ok e, 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 yeah this uh, matrix what do we call it whatever it is this matrix into this matrix into uh, y not. So, you have your solution representation again. So, that gives you more or less a complete description of course, the things are not that easy as we think, but then uh, you can write your solutions completely here, you are able to completely here. So, what you the important point in this thing that for every solution you are reduced to a system of smaller systems and the only things are coming is the exponential function in the solution, the polynomial functions because of t, t square etcetera polynomial functions and the trigonometric function. So, the every solution of your linear system is a linear combination of these factors something like t power k, e power a t and cos b t or t power k, e power a t sin b t. So, the only these elementary functions and its combinations will come in the representation of these solutions. That is a small remark. So, maybe we will uh, uh, so, uh, uh, we'll write a corollary in that form immediately what analysis you can uh, do that. The solution x t the solution x t of the initial value problem of the initial value problem this is an important uh, observation initial value problem is the linear combination linear combination of the form t power k some number t power k E power, there will be many different types, e power, but it will be of that form cos b t and t power k e power a t sin b t. Okay. So, this also uh, where lambda is of the form a plus i b. Okay. Okay, of some form. So, that gives you, so you know that only the uh, expressions of the form t power k e power a t cos b t or sin b t are available and so you can immediately see that you can occur stability only when a is negative for all the eigenvalues. So, the stability of this system if one of the terms the real part of the eigenvalue is positive non zero uh, and positive. Uh, greater than or equal to 0, if any eigenvalue, any one of the eigenvalue uh, has a real part which is greater than or equal to 0, you do not have the stability. So, the x t goes to 0 only when the real eigenvalues all the real part of the eigenvalue is negative. In that case, it goes to the origin exponentially because there is an exponential term and that is what the one remark. And secondly, what you want to do is that you want to do uh, one or two exam, maybe one or two examples at this stage. Maybe uh, uh, I will give you one more thing. Uh, one more remark I want to make it here, probably. Uh, thing. The other remark I want to think. So corresponding to that, I don't prove here, but uh, I want to make. In the general case, what will happen is that 
So, you, you look at this all the subspaces E s is equal to the span of I am writing in general complex. If the complex part is 0, it will you will become real part. So, you look at V j u j where u j plus i v j is an eigen vector corresponding to lambda. So, okay. so such that your E a j is negative. Okay. You look at your eigen value is always lambda is equal to a j plus i b j okay and eigen vector this is the eigen value and eigen vector is equal to u j plus i v j you write it that way in the complex way you write everything so you have if b j equal to 0 it becomes a real eigen value there is no vector so there is no problem so it incorporates even the real eigen values with b j equal to 0 so look at all the eigen values all the eigen vector real and complex part uh, part of the ve eigen vector corresponding to a real eigen value corresponding to an eigen value whose real part is negative and collect all that span it that are called the stable part okay and then similarly you have your eu this is span of vj uj with a j positive and E c that which we are not seeing an example maybe we will see an example span of V j u j with a j is equal to 0. What the interesting theorem will tell you which I do not prove the your space R n can be decomposed into E s the A, these are called direct sum E u direct sum yeah of course one may need to use the pro, uh, other E c this is called the stable space you will learn more about these things in the nonlinear study stable this is the unstable subspace unstable this is called the center what i have not uh, mentioned here is about the uh, generalized taken vector once to do the jordan decomposition as i said you may not have the enough eigen vectors so, one has to work with what is called generalized Eigen vector. So, we will be studying in that the whole analysis in the generalized concept which uh, we have not introduced or we do not have time in this course to get into more details about the generalized Eigen vector here. But we have to work this decomposition to happen uh, in that form in Jordan decomposition to happen you need to work with the generalized Eigen vector. So, we will not give you maybe probably if you have a time I will uh, 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 do that. the interesting one more thing is that one more some of the notions I am introducing it you will understand it when more about it when we go into the nonlinear analysis okay. a definition to start with a subspace E is called invariant under the flow recall the flow called invariant under the flow what is flow flow e c power t a if e power t a of e if we act on e it will remain in e itself so it will remain in e the other results about the proposition or theorem part of the previous theorem which I have not stated is that these spaces are invariant e power t a of e s contained in e s e power t a of e u contained in e u. What it shows that 
if you start with a point in say e power s and if you follow the trajectory starting from there under e power a, it will remain in e power s itself, it will not move out of e power s. On the other hand, that is a stable space subspace. On the other hand, if you start with from a initial point from e power u, then e, e power t a of that element will remain all the time in e power u. So, it will not leave these spaces that is invariant thing. So, the e power s, e power u are invariant subspaces under the flow. So, the flow will not do that one. In particular, if x naught is in e power s, you can see that e power that means all its real part of the eigenvalues are negative and hence it is stable exponentially. So, if you start with an x naught in e power s, e power t a, a has negative eigenvalues, the trajectory will go to 0, that is an interesting thing. Okay. And this is in more general probably you may learn uh, in the form of stable manifold theorem, which we will not uh, uh, do it here. Probably we may do it in a module of nonlinear analysis if possible, otherwise we may not cover, but basically it is uh, the content in the linear system of that. The stable thing, anything you start from a stable manifold, stable subspace, and then you do not get the subspaces when you go to nonlinear analysis. You start thing, but in the linear system, if you start from this stable E s, it will go to the thing here. To give a uh, probably uh, I want to give uh, some more example, uh, one more lemma or something, I may skip it here, but then I want to start uh, two more examples in the remaining time of this lecture, uh, maybe one example or two example, let us see, we will give one more example. So, let us start with an example now. and maybe one more example in the next class, we will do it thing. So, with this example we can think. So, let us consider the system A, 0, minus 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2. If you look at the system A, this is again actually decoupled, decoupled into a 2 by 2 system here. If you look at here, this is a 2 by 2 system decoupled with a equal to 0. So, it is a something like a center, you see, and then x 3 component is separate. So, what are your eigenvalues? You have your eigenvalue i, of course, minus i, the other eigenvalue lambda 2, and you have lambda 3 is equal to 2, lambda 2 is equal to yes. And you can also see that uh, your eigenvector, you can see that these are all exercise. Whenever I leave, I do not work out, is called the exercise part. You have your 0, 1, 0 plus i into 1, 0, 0, and that we will uh, call it this is your u1 plus i v 1 and you will have corresponding to this, you have an another vector u 2 because that is a real eigenvalue. So, you have only one eigenvector 0 0 1. So, you see, so you have. So, if you look at it here, this part is 0, it is a corresponding to a center, your E c is nothing but your x 1 x 2 plane is a center, it is a form of a center with the real part of this second value is 0. So, for this lambda 1, lambda 2, the real part is 0. So, it will behave like a center and your other eigen value is 2 that is corresponding to the x 3 part and since it is a 2 and positive, it will go to infinity and it is unstable and you have your unstable part is the x 3 axis. You see, so always decomposing and you are there is no nothing like stable here, stable is empty. So, you again complete the x, x 1 x 2 plane and decompose your r 2. Of course, your r 3 is E c plus direct sum into E u, E s is empty. So, you plot this graph here, if you want to see a 
plot of this graph you want to see a plot of this graph if you so this is your x1 to your x1 and this is your x3 and x3 is a decoupled part so whenever you start a solution here whenever you start a solution here because x3 in the x1 x2 plane so if you have any initial values in the x1 x2 plane and by the solution is a decoupled x3 is decoupled it will remain in the x1 x2 plane itself and in the x1 x2 plane the real part of the eigen value is zero so it will remain like a center so it will be a circle the solution will be circle so if you start from here it will be like this you see it will be in the x1 x2 plane so what will happen if it's a point if you are starting from above or below what does it shows that the this shows uh, it will rotate the x1 x2 plane it should rotate but then the x3 component x3 t is equal to x03 if you look at here x3 t is nothing but x03 into e power 2t it goes to infinity without reducing this uh, thing so if you start from any point here if you start from here it will move like a center but then xt will going up you see so if you anything it will curl around with the same like a center and will move up because that if you have below it will also move below with the same radius so it can work the exercise for you to take all kinds of things in three dimension and see all possibilities okay so maybe uh, uh, one more example to and then in the next class i will give one more example if i have time so one more example i want to so uh, the, the examples are the best way of imagine so i want to have a with the both we already seen with one eigen value zero now you have one with both eigen value zero so what is this system corresponding to that x1 dot is equal to 0 x2 dot is equal to x1 so that implies immediately x1 t is equal to constant that is nothing but x01 and your x2 t is equal to x01 t plus x02 so now let us find out the equilibrium point if you want to find out the equilibrium point you look at a x equal to 0 when a x equal to 0 the first one give any information because x uh, 0 equal to 0 you will get it the second will give you an information your the first component is 0 so the se first component is 0 second component is arbitrary that implies every point earlier we got every point on the x axis every here every point on the y axis is an equilibrium point is an equilibrium point you see so if you try to see the here plot the graph here all the points here are equilibrium point if you recall the earlier example which i have given in a similar situation with an eigen value uh, with one eigen value zero and the other eigen value non zero eigen value you have seen that uh, all the points on the x axis uh, thing and anything you start above it goes towards that thing but here you will see something different so when there is a degenerate case the situation will be different so now let us look at it any point x naught here again what does it say is that this tells you that again x1 t is x01 
So, it should remain in the perpendicular line still and the second one because of the x 0 to t this looks as it, it depends on this t tends to infinity you uh, say x 0 1 if you take x 0 1 in the, this is a quadrangle on this quadrangle x 0 1 is always positive you see. So, if you look at your first uh, if you take the upper half plane the first and second quadrangle uh, your x 0 x 0 1 positive or x 0 2 yeah if you take this sorry. So, if you look at this portion your x this is the x 1 x is so on that portion on this portion here also x 0 1 positive x 0 1 is positive and if you look at here in this case x 2 t here tends to plus infinity as t tends to infinity if x 0 1 positive and it tends to minus infinity as t tends to infinity if x 0 2 is uh, x 0 1 is negative. So, if you start to any point here the first component will retain here. So, it has to move in a line perpendicular to x 1 axis, but it should move to plus infinity. Even from here your x 0 common component is positive. So, it will not go to towards any equilibrium point anywhere you start it it will move like this it will move again like that only. On the other hand this side x 0 1 is negative in that case it will go to minus infinity the uh, thing and again it should remain in the perpendicular to x 1 axis. So, it will move here if you start from here it will move you see near the center the behavior will be like this anything where it starts does not matter even if any point you study it will move like that and these are all equilibrium points also on the y axis if you start it it will remain there because every point is an equilibrium point and the right side if you start it is going to the infinity along that one. So, this is a phase portrait of this thing. root of the system. So, with this uh, uh, we will uh, have finished uh, more or less uh, everything uh, uh, with uh, one definition I will end this class definition if all the eigenvalues of A this is because this terminology will be used in the nonlinear system. If all the eigenvalues of A have non zero real part have zero real part leads to center that is we have non zero real part then the flow is said to be hyperbolic then the flow is said to be hyperbolic and the system is called as and the system is called a, a hyperbolic system. So, you will study more about this hyperbolic system etcetera in the nonlinear thing ok. So, in the last lecture if we have time we will try to present one more example, but then may may of my next lecture the last lecture of this particular module is to see how to represent the solutions um, in the non homogeneous system. So, far we were studying x to t equal to a x t. So, we want to see how to use this to represent a solution of the form x dot equal to a x t plus g x and we make few remarks when it is a non autonomous system where a depends on a t. 
then the we do not have a representation like that, but we can represent a solution in the form of something else what are called the fundamental and transition metrics. So, uh, with that uh, we stop this lecture, thank you.